Hey, my name is Marcus Burton, Director of Product Development with CWMP. I'm here in this session to talk about something called dynamic rate switching. Uh, this is sometimes abbreviated as DRS, but it's usually referred to by the whole name. So unlike most technologies, uh, the acronym is, is not always uh, easily identifiable. You'll sometimes also see dynamic rate selection. Uh, you know, I think that's just, uh, you know, sometimes the, the terminology gets confused. But So the idea behind dynamic rate switching is that each phi technology within the 802.11 standard uh, has a certain range of, of data rates. Uh, and those data rates are achieved by less or more complex modulation and coding processes. Now, when you think about modulation and coding processes, let's avoid the, the real intricate details of those processes for now, but, but just understand that less complex modulation and coding processes can be successfully interpreted by a receiver uh, in, in poor RF environments or poorer RF environments. So the signal quality can be lower and you can still receive a lower data rate or a less complex modulation encoding process in those environments. As the data rate goes up and the modulation encoding process becomes more complex, the signal quality required to successfully interpret that data actually needs to be higher. Um, so dynamic rate switching is a process that sort of uh, it facilitates the process of using a low data rate in some circumstances or a higher data rate in other circumstances and adjusting that data rate based on the quality of the signal that's being received or, or sent by the, uh, by the other endpoint in, in RF communications. So in Wi-Fi networks, let's look at how this works. If you have an access point in the middle of its service area, and then within that service area, you have a client device. Now, when it first associates, maybe it connects at 24 megabits per second based on its algorithm that determines, uh, you know, based on signal quality and, uh, you know, some of these factors, it determines what data rate it should use. So it starts here at 24 megabits per second. And let's just call this, uh, for simplicity, an 802.11a uh, OFDM station. Now, of course, the, the beauty of wireless technology is that clients can be mobile. Uh, so as this user moves throughout this access point service area, maybe it moves closer to the access point, the signal quality of those two stations goes up. So maybe as it gets right here, it's going to use 36 megabits per second based on the fact that the signal to noise ratio is a lot higher or that the loss rate is lower or that the retries are lower. Uh, all of these different metrics are figured into a dynamic rate switching algorithm. And uh, the 802.11 standard doesn't say how exactly dynamic rate switching should work. It doesn't specify an algorithm to use. It just says, you know, that's beyond the scope of this standard, basically. So vendor implementations uh, are, you know, are specific to their preferences and their own algorithms. But each one uses a pretty similar set of metrics and processes to say, you know, as we get closer, usually closer to the access point, the signal quality improves, so we can use, uh, we can use higher data rates. So maybe as it gets uh, closer up to here, it's going to use 54 megabits per second. And then let's say it moves down to here, and when it gets to the edge of the cell down here, it's going to go down to 12 megabits per second, and, and so on. So you get the idea here, the concept that Usually, as it moves closer, the signal quality improves. As it moves farther away, the signal quality decreases. Therefore, it has to adjust the data rate accordingly. Now, this isn't just related to distance from the access point, though that's a primary factor. It's also related to the signal quality. So, if it was sitting here, and maybe it can get, uh, you know, maybe it can get 24 megs here, uh, the, the connectivity rate or the data rate, even though this spot up here is closer to the access point than it is down here, you might only get 12 megabits per second here based on the environmental conditions. Maybe there's more walls here. Uh, you know, depending on what's going on in the RF environment, it's going to change the signal quality, which also changes the performance uh, you know, measured by those metrics that I mentioned earlier. Loss, retries, CRC errors, uh, you know, some of those types of things. So that's dynamic rate switching in a nutshell. It takes uh, modulation and coding processes and it adjusts those processes based on the quality of the communications uh, with the peer, the peer station in RF communication. 
Uh, so I hope that's informative for you, dynamic rate switching. Again, my name is Marcus Burton. For more information, feel free to visit cwnp.com.